If you go to the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation website, one of the stories of help and hope you'll find there is about one Susan Thornton, and she joins us now not as a patient but as the new CEO of the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation. Interesting journey you have had. (laughs) To say the least, yes. All right, so you're 31 years old, life is good, you've got a good career, a great attitude, and bam, a devastating diagnosis that you didn't want or expect happens. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) That kind of nails it on the head. (laughs) What was that like? um, Pretty devastating. You know, you think you have the world by the tail at 31. I I was a year into a new job that I was excited about, had a little rash around my waist, spent about a year going to different dermatologists trying to figure out what this stupid thing was, and landed in a dermatology office with, an, uh, with a derm that said, hmm, this looks really interesting. I think I've seen this before. I'm going to do a biopsy, and I'm sending you down to a specialist. And I believe it's a rare form of cancer. And uh, I was there on my lunch hour, needless to say, I left that office, went back, packed up my stuff, and immediately drove to my mom's house to say, I've just been diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. And that was kind of where we began. So that's 91. Six years later, the disease gets really aggressive. You find yourself at stage four. Yeah, Yeah, I had uh, tumors everywhere. My scalp, my right eye was almost shut with the tumor. Um, in places you don't even want to know. And we never thought it would get to that point. Uh, This is a a rare cancer. A lot of times early stage patients, the disease doesn't transform. About 10% of the patients, the disease does transform. Unfortunately, I drew that lottery card as well. And um, I was looking at a bone marrow transplant at that point in time, which in 1998 was really experimental for this, for any disease, but in particular for this disease. Fortunately for me, I live in Philadelphia and was with one of the premier specialists in the disease. He worked directly with a radiation oncologist and they set me up with three months of radiation therapy, very specific for this disease, different than other kinds of radiation therapy, and uh, it did the trick. My goodness, that's 15, 14 years ago, and here you are looking very healthy. Thank you. And now you've got a new chapter in your life. I know you've worked with the foundation for five years or mm-hmm. so, and then yeah. after being invited to join the board, now you're the CEO. kind of feels maybe <laughs> meant to be. I think so. You know, I, I said to someone the other day, you know, who's ever running the chessboard in the sky probably had all the moves down. I just couldn't see it at the time. So, uh, yeah, I, I just feel really lucky and very blessed to be here now. I've spent the last year working with the foundation on all the patient programs and services, traveling the country, being with patients, taking the one-on-one support calls, and it, it, it doesn't really get much better than to be able to offer hope and support for other patients who've been newly diagnosed, to share a little bit about my story, and to let them know that A, the foundation is there to really help them along the way, and also that there is hope and that you can live a full life. Now, I would be silly if I asked you the standard question, so what would you hope to accomplish? With somebody like you, it seems like the question would be, okay, Susan, what are you going to accomplish with the foundation? Ha! <sighs> we have lots and lots of things. You know, the foundation is really the only patient advocacy organization worldwide that that provides support for patients. So ultimately, really being able to collaborate with other organizations worldwide to be the voice of cutaneous lymphoma around the world, and also to be able to do more outreach to patients to make sure that they get the information that they need when they're diagnosed. But there's a whole other part of what we can do as far as making sure that local dermatologists are aware of the disease and know how to connect with specialists who can work with them to diagnose and treat patients so that we can get patients diagnosed earlier, treated faster. Obviously, there's there's a lot that goes into treating a chronic form of cancer, which basically is what this is. At this point in time, there is no cure. So 
treating the patient, making sure that they're getting what they need, not only from the clinical perspective, but from the emotional impact, the financial impact that happens when you're living with the disease for a long period of time in your life. So to be able to help people financially, also psychologically and socially, if you've got lesions that people can see, sometimes that has a huge impact. So to be able to do more along those lines, um, to really provide information and programs using technology, you know, uh, being able to do videos and webinars and things like that for patients who may not be able to come to our live programs. Uh, and to really be able to collect data from the patients. You know, what are you using over the counter these days? What's working for you? So that we can collectively share that information with patients, hopefully around the world, so that their lives are better. You seem like you've not only walked the path of a problem solver, but you talk like a problem solver. And that can be very helpful for people who are looking and hoping for a solution. I think there's so much that goes into this particular disease. You know, we, we straddle the fence between the dermatology world and the oncology world. So being able to bring those two worlds together, not only from the clinical perspective, but also on the patient's side to make sure that they know where they need to go for treatments, what treatments are out there to work. And then that also goes into the research and trying to do advocacy in Washington to make sure that there's research funding for the disease. It's a rare disease. There's not a lot of research money out there so that we can really bring the best minds together and to do our best to make sure that the research is being done for our patients so that they can live a long and productive life. Very good, Susan. Congratulations on overcoming where you've been. Congratulations on where you are now. Thank you. And congratulations on where you're going in the future. Thank you very much. Very Appreciate good. it. Susan Thornton, she is the new CEO of the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation, joining us here at ASCO 2012.